Okay, team, we're almost through all of these pathways. Now we're going to put together how B cells and antibodies are made. So we start exactly the same way as we did for the Th1 pathway. So we see here we still have our same PAMP, which is our flagella on our bacterium. That PAMP is recognized by a pattern recognition receptor on the surface of the macrophage. So first we're going to get production of immune signals from the macrophage, just like before. And we're also going to get uh, endocytosis of the PAMP plus PRR. Uh, endocytosis brings the pathogen into a special compartment called the endosome, where there the pathogen is broken up into lots of little pieces at random. And one of those pieces, as we're going to call antigen number one, is loaded into our um, antigen presenting receptor, and that's called MHC class two. So at random, um, I didn't label it here, but remember, we have our helper T cell, and on the surface of the helper T cell is going to be our T cell receptor. This T cell receptor is going to be specific for antigen number one plus MHC class two. So when the TCR receptor on the helper T cell type two binds to antigen number one, plus our MHC class 2, we get activation of the helper T cell, Th2. So just like in the Th1 pathway, what happens when Th2 gets activated is it's going to divide, but it's also going to release our immune signals called our cytokines. But because this is a Th2 cell and we ultimately want to get production of antibodies, a different mixture of cytokines are released and we're going to call these IL-4 and IL-10. And also we usually draw these signals as little round balls as you can see right here. And remember that these are proteins. So everything that we learned about proteins is true for these signal uh, molecules. So again, remember Th2 helper T cells do not directly activate other immune cells, but they activate the immune cells via the release of these cytokines. So it's the cytokines that activate B cells. So here I've drawn how IL-4, which is our protein immune signal, uh, is released from the Th2 cell, which I showed up there. And then it goes around and it looks for its specific receptor, which is the IL-4 receptor. And this is found on B cells. So when IL-4 binds to the IL-4 receptor, this leads to activation of the B cell. So a few things will happen. The B cell will divide, and it will also specialize. And um, it will specialize into plasma cells, for example. Um, and these are our antibody factories. And remember that the, the antibody that it, will be, that it will make will be specific for antigen number one. So the same antigen that was up here that activated our helper T cell um, will also be what this antibody is made against. So it's an antibody factory against antigen number one. Uh, the antibodies that are made by this plasma cell, by these B cells, would not work against another antigen that came from a different part of our pathogen. A whole nother B cell would have to be made for that. The other thing that happens is the specialization into memory cells, memory B cells. So these are great because the next time we see or the body sees antigen number one, this will be recognized and antibodies will be produced right away. So that's the whole the great thing about the memory response. We can have memory T cells and memory B cells, and what happens is when you see the same antigen a second, third, fourth, a uh, hundredth time, your memory B cells will be activated right away, and you'll have a response, destruction of your specific pathogen very quickly. So in the last episode we're going to have next is Re is just a little bit more about why the memory response is so important. And to remember that this is ultimately the goal of vaccination, is to have not just a memory B cell response, but both a memory B cell and T cell response. So that when we see a pathogen 
uh, out in nature, in the wilds, if you will, that our uh, immune response can act really fast and eliminate pathogens before you feel sick and before you're contagious and can pass it on.